so I've been trying to record this video and this light just decided it just didn't want to be a light anymore so uh, yeah that's that's pretty annoying so if the lighting's off in this video that's why but that's okay though because I have upgraded this PC here and in today's video I'm going to be comparing it to my old configuration and seeing how much better it is currently and spoiler alert it's a lot better. I briefly covered some performance benchmarks in the previous video which I made on this upgrade which you can watch up here or there and I'd recommend watching this video for some context but basically in that video I did say that this PC was a lot better than it was previously but this video differs because I'm going in depth with the benchmarking results. I have tested nine different games I've also done some Cinebench testing as well and I've also done some more subjective testing like how it is in day-to-day -day life and how it is in programs like Adobe Premiere Pro and also Lightroom as well. Without any more waffling, let's get straight into the benchmarks. So my previous system was a Ryzen 9 3950X with 32GB of CL16 3200MHz dual rank DDR4 memory, a Samsung 980 Pro NVMe Gen 4 SSD, and a Gigabyte X570 Aorus Ultra. The Intel Core i7-13700K system, which my PC currently is now, has the, the Intel 13700K clocked at 5.3 GHz, an MSI Z690 Force Wi-Fi MPG, it's, it's such a long motherboard name if I'm honest, but it's got 32 GB of 5600 MHz, CR36 memory from Patriot and this is DDR5 and it's also keeping the Samsung 980 Pro as well so the SSD is exactly the same. Resizable bar has been used for all tests today with an RTX 3080 10 gigabyte founders edition so there's no skews there with sort of the different graphics cards or different settings there and all tests have been done at 1440p mainly because that's just the resolution I play games at. So if this was 1080p, we'd be seeing more of a difference between the data. And if it was 4K, we would have been seeing less of a difference. Starting off with the Cinebench R23 single core performance, the Ryzen 9 3950X gets 1237, which was actually respectable for its time. It's about on par with Intel's seventh gen chips, and this was when AMD was trying to catch up to Intel. So this is pretty impressive, especially for the time. The 13700K achieved a massive 1957 here, and this is a testament to Raptor Lake's single core performance. It's absolutely incredible. The 3950X gets absolutely trounced by the 13700K here, like they're not even in the same competition, if I'm honest. A 57% uplift in single core performance is absolutely massive it's just it's just ridiculous that this amount of ipc gains been seen in like three years this is absolutely incredible the biggest strength of the 3950x is its multi-core performance and this is mainly thanks to its 32 processing threads this netted 22,554 for the multi-core test which is a pretty reasonable result however despite having eight less threads the 13700k scored higher getting 28,056. This is an improvement of 24%, which was actually bigger than what I was expecting because I was expecting them eight extra threads to come in handy there. And this just goes to show how powerful each individual core is on the 13700K. Starting off the gaming benchmarks with Forza Horizon 5, and here I set it to Ultra with TAA enabled. I know these aren't the best settings to test CPUs at, but we still saw quite big differences with these. With the 3950X, it got 129 FPS on average with 102 for the 1% low, which was very reasonable, very respectable, and certainly very playable. However, with the 13700K though, it got 150 FPS for average average and for the one percent low it got 130 so the frames are a lot more consistent and that average is higher as well so the 13700k does net a bit of a bonus here but it's certainly not make or break gta 5 was a bit of a weird one here i set it to very high with two times msaa and i did notice the worst stutters on the 13700k system for whatever reason i don't know why but that's a bit of a weird one i might need to retest gta 5 However, with the 3950X installed, it got 117 FPS on average with 89 FPS for the 1% low. Moving to the 13700K system, it got 162 FPS on average, so that's a big improvement there, but it's still got the same with 89 FPS for the 1% low. 
this is where the stutters were coming in. I just don't know what was going on here. And this is just a very hard one to explain. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is up next. And this game really doesn't care what CPU you've got. However, setting it to the Ultra preset, we do see a slight performance uplift with the 13700K. Only going up to 10 FPS to 105 FPS. And the 1% low only went up by 2 FPS. Yet again, as we've seen from previous benchmarking results, Modern Warfare 2 just really doesn't care what CPU you've got. It's a very GPU dependent game. Speaking of GPU dependent games, F122 is up next. Here I set it to the ultra preset, but I did turn ray tracing off as well to make it a bit more CPU bound. The 3950X scored 148 FPS for the average and 102 FPS for the 1% low. The 13700K did marginally improve this, upping it to 181 for the averages and 109 FPS for the 1% low. So both of these CPUs, perfectly great with an RTX 3080 for F122. Rainbow Six Siege was a game that saw one of the biggest improvements today. And setting it to the Ultra preset, the 3950X got 292 FPS on average with 204 FPS for the 1% low. This is pretty respectable and even if you've got a 240 hertz monitor, this is going to be great. But the 13700K gets 360 8 for the average and for the 1% low it gets 252. This is some incredible performance gains and this is why a lot of people, especially if they're playing really high frame rate games, they like a good CPU to pair with their GPU. But at these frame rates though, if you've got like a 240Hz monitor, you're not going to notice that much of a difference. Maybe a bit with the frame consistency, but other than that, I don't think so. And the 3950X got 117 FPS on average with a 1% low of 84 FPS. The 13700K boosts the averages by 30 FPS going up to 147 FPS and the 1% lows have also gone up by 19 to 103 FPS. The game felt a lot smoother as always with the 13700K and you're losing a bit of performance if I'm honest with the 3950X. The Cyberpunk figures actually did surprise me today and setting it here to Ultra with no ray tracing again the 3950X got 71 FPS on average with 58 FPS for the 1% low. The 13700K upped the average to 91, which is a nice extra 20 frames in your pocket right there. And it also ups the 1% low to 72. So the game was averaging a lot better and it was also a lot smoother as well. Cyberpunk has actually gotten pretty CPU intensive recently from what I've noticed because before I didn't think it was really CPU intensive but now it is. Next game up is Battlefield 2042 and this is probably the most CPU intensive game here. With the 3950X it got 120 FPS on average with a 1% low of 58. The 1% lows were really what crushed this game if I'm honest because the averages weren't bad. However, the 3700K ups this to 161 and 110 for the average and 1% lows respectively. So you're seeing a massive performance gain here. And Battlefield 2042 is the one game I noticed where it was just a lot smoother thanks to the massive increase in 1% low gaming performance. Last game up today is Fortnite and this game saw a massive improvement. Here I set it to DirectX 12 with the low settings and high textures and high view distance as well. These are the settings I like to use as they blend some visual fidelity and you get a lot of performance with them as well. With that being said, the 3950X got 218 FPS on average with 101 for the 1% low, but the 13700K absolutely trounces it here, getting 345 for the average frame rate and 221 for the 1% low. So the 1% lows have more than doubled here, which is absolutely insane. Looking at the performance of the nine games tested today, and we see every game increased both their average frame rates and their 1% lows. Performance with the 3950X wasn't terrible if I'm honest, it was certainly playable, although it did have a performance deficit to the 13700K of 31 and 35% for the averages and 1% lows respectively. That is a lot of performance to be leaving on the table because this is just an absolutely huge margin. It's probably a bigger margin than upgrading to the next tier of GPU. That's, that's how much performance was being left on the table here. It was good to see the higher average frame rates. This is always good because who doesn't like higher frame rates? But the thing that I'm more interested in is the better 1% lows. Games felt noticeably smoother with the 13700K while playing 
and this is what I want with my games because the frame delivery of the 13700K is vastly superior to the 3950X and games just were a lot more enjoyable and I felt that I could actually play games like Battlefield 2042 a lot better because the input just felt a lot smoother. It's kind of hard to explain but you might be getting what I'm at here. And this is just one of the weak points of older Ryzen CPUs. The frame consistency with them wasn't exactly the best, but then again, as I've said, they are still very playable. And it's not just the gaming performance that has been improved as well. Applications like Adobe Premiere Pro are running a lot better with the 13700K. The IPC has been vastly improved with the 13700K because it's like 51% better or something ridiculous like that. And it's also got an integrated GPU. The quick sync function on Intel integrated GPUs is just simply amazing, especially if you're a video editor, it's very useful. When my 3950X was stuttering and just hitching in Premiere Pro, my 13700K has been flawless in this regard. And even in apps like Adobe Lightroom, using the spot healing tool, it's just a lot quicker with the 13700K. It's like very snappy, it's instant. Whereas with my 3950X, I was waiting for a couple of seconds every time I did it. I know this sounds very minor, but if you're doing this stuff, Every day, day in, day out, you do recognize the difference. To round off this video, I think it's fair to say that I'm very happy with this upgrade and I certainly have no regrets at all. Getting a 31% uplift in games is a very nice bonus and that 51% in IPC improvements with a single core performance is absolutely amazing and that just makes Windows a lot snappier and it just makes using apps like Lightroom a lot better as well. So I can work better on this machine, I can also game better on this machine, and that's why I'm really happy with it. So if you like this video, leave it a like, stay subscribed for more tech content, and I'll catch you in the next one.